Hello friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new, my name is Michaela and I make lifestyle and adult coloring videos here on this channel. And if you guys have not noticed, I took a little bit of a break from YouTube for a little bit. I took about a week break. The last video I uploaded was exactly a week from today when this video is uploaded. I felt a little bit burnt out. It was um, a bad week last week, just needed some time for myself. And I also wanted a little bit more time to prepare for this video, which is my coloring for beginners guide kind of video. Um, basically, I'm just gonna show you guys all of my recommendations from color by numbers, to easy coloring books, to more intricate coloring books, to supplies, just literally everything you might wanna know if you are just beginning adult coloring. This is the video for you. I have everything in this notebook. I am really excited to show you guys all of my recommendations. I will have everything linked down below so you guys can check out anything you want to in this video. Editing Michaela will hate me for that later, but you know what? That is okay. Please check out the links down below if you want to check out any of these books. If you enjoy this video, make sure to subscribe down below so you can get more um, notifications on when I upload and let me know in the comments if you guys have any questions about anything. I'm happy to answer any of your questions and I think that is it for this intro. So let's get right into the video. So the first category I have here that I want to go through is color by number and I actually really quickly want to mention that if you want to skip to a specific part of the video check out the timestamps down below. Just wanted to put that out there. I forgot to mention it earlier. But first we have color by number and one of my all-time favorite uh, color by number companies is Color Questopia. They have such an amazing variety of books and I just picked these two to show you guys today but they have a bunch of books and you will definitely find something within their category catalog. Maybe maybe catalog is the right word in their catalog of books. They just have so many. So let me show you guys. First here we have um, a white background book. This is Halloween Horror. I think actually this book is now titled Halloween, not Halloween Horror, but I'll double check that. Obviously it'll be linked down below. But this is a white background version, so let me show you guys a picture I have completed in here. And actually, really quickly, let me just note that I really like these books because they come with um, sample pages in the back of the book. So if you're ever feeling like, you know, testing out other books by them but don't want to commit, uh, they have some sample pages in the back. But let me find a page I've done. So as you guys can tell, I have done the mosaic outline in black Sharpie, and I colored in the picture with an Ohuhu alcohol marker. So before this, the picture looked more like this. Basically, um, the outline work is not done for you, so you can choose if you want to go in with a different color, so black, a uh, glitter gel pen of any color, and color in the outline, and then color in the color by number. And the color palette is over here. Let me see if I can find. There we go. Maybe this is a better page to be showing. So you can choose the color that you color in the outline with, or you can just leave it plain. I had done that at the beginning, but I ended up going back in and just coloring it in black, just because I think the black looks better than um, keeping it uncolored, because I use alcohol markers and they do bleed through in this book, um, through the lines, so the black kind of keeps it contained. But this is just a really quick flip of this book. Again, you can't go wrong with any Color Questopia books, I feel. That is their white background version. And then we also have here, we also have their black background version. This is Mandala color by number. Again, they have some sample pages in the back. And then you get into the nice mandalas. And so with the black background version, basically the line work is filled in in black. So if you if you were thinking about getting this book in the white background version, just think about the lines that are colored in in black just wouldn't be colored. So you'd have a white a white page basically with a mandala on it. And I really enjoy this book also. I think it's super duper fun. And this book actually incorporates their new color palette, I believe. So I think it's a 25 color palette, which is awesome. Oh, I just noticed this one. This one's fun. It has things on the outside, too. I'll give you guys a little bit of a sneak peek into what I colored this month, but this is kind of just what a completed page in this book would look like. Love, love, love how it came out. And you know what? Honestly, like I said, you can't go wrong with any Color Questopia books, so this is definitely a great brand if you're looking for color by number. 
Next up, if you've been around my channel for any length of time, you guys know that I love Kira Shershneva's coloring books and especially her color by colors. So I know this is not really color by number necessarily and I will show you a color by number by her. This is a color by color. Let me show you guys a blank one. So you have the color palette over here and you have the picture on the right. Basically the um, picture is outlined in a color and that's the color you color in with. So basically if you don't like numbers showing through on your finished pages you would really like this because it's just the color outline so you could match it pretty closely if you wanted to. I have done quite a few in this book. I really recommend this book to everybody. I just think it's so easy, so fun, so relaxing and mindless. So that is her Color by Colors coloring book. And next we have Kira's Stained Glass Color by Number coloring book. This is just a normal color by number, but I really recommend it because it is so relaxing. I did not expect to love this book as much as I did when I first got it for review. I don't know why, because it's, it reminds me of Sun Life Drawing, which I will get to in a minute. But basically it's just your standard color by number. It has um, the picture on the right, the color code on the left. It just shows you the colors you will need, which is great. I don't really love when coloring books don't show you what um on, like only the colors you'll use because I feel like I'm kind of just searching for numbers that don't exist but let me just show you one that I've completed I'll do this one since I showed this one last month and the one I <laughs> skipped through was the one I did this month but yeah these are just super fun relaxing just overall just a fantastic coloring book if you're into color by numbers or want to get into color by numbers. And that is it for all of my Kira Shershneva. And next I'm going to move into Sun Life Drawing. So next we have Sun Life Drawing and I have three different styles of color by number that they've put out to show you, to show you guys. So the first one is just their normal stained glass color by number. This is World of Mice, but they also have a fairies version, a Christmas version. They came out with a new mermaids version, but I'm only going to link this one down below since this is the only one I'm showing you. But this one is my favorite. I, I don't own any of the other ones, but I knew this one was going to be my favorite because this is just so cute. Um, also, this comes with a couple sample pages in the back. So if you're into that, that's fun. But here are the color by numbers. I have done a decent chunk of this book. I've done at least half of the book. This is very similar to The Flowers Stained Glass by Kira Shershneva. I don't think you could go wrong with any of the Sun Life drawing color by numbers in this version. Um, you just kind of have to find what what style you like best. So if you like mice, you might like this book. If you like fairies, you'll like the fairy book. If you like mermaids, you'll like the mermaid book, you know what I mean? Uh, so that is World of Mice, stained glass color by number. And then we have a different style, which is their pixel color by numbers. This is interesting because basically, let me just show you guys. Let me find um, a, a different one. There we go. Oh, okay. I wanted to do one that was vertical. Basically, if you guys can see, it is just basically these tiny pixels with numbers in it and you just color corresponding to the color key. And if you don't want to be um, spoiled, just close your eyes really quickly. But this is like what a completed page would look like. So the picture turned from little pixels to this. And I just wanted to show you guys, you guys can open your eyes now I closed out of it, but I just wanted to show you guys um, this kind of style because it is really relaxing. I kind of have to be in the mood for it personally, but if you're into something where it starts out as a mystery and you want something that's affordable like these um, Animal Quest books, they also have a bunch of other different styles. So if animal uh, babies aren't your thing, totally fine. You can find something that uh, is up your alley. I definitely had a sentence running and I don't remember what I was going to say. Basically these are great if you're into mysteries and you want to also be relaxed at the same time. These are perfect. Last but not least I have uh, this kind of style of color by number by Sun Life Drawing. 
This is just, in my opinion, very similar to just normal color by numbers. It's not really the same as the stained glass because it's not stained glass and it's definitely not the pixel, but it's a really simple color by number. These pictures take me like half an hour max usually and they do not involve many colors on the page. It's super fun. You get half in the black background and half in the white background. If I could, if I could flip to one, there we go. So you get half of half of the black and half of the white. Let me show you a picture I have completed. So I have done this one. Look how pretty it turns out. And honestly, even with these color by numbers, if you wanted to just take a page and do it in your own colors, you totally could. And I actually do think Sun Life Drawing sells these books just as like a one color art, but you don't have to make it one color. These are just super duper relaxing and fun. These are just a few examples of what I've done in this book. Again, recommend for someone, maybe if you're into something, you want something super quick and easy, this would be more up your alley than the other books because I will admit that like the Color Quest book takes a little more time to do. Um, the stained glass, not as long as the pixel, but definitely up there. This would take you like 30 minutes to an hour probably. Probably not even that long depending how fast you color. But that is my recommendation for all my Sun Life drawing books and in general uh, color by number. So let's move in to the next section of the video. The next section of the video that we are moving into are normal coloring books, I'd say. So just traditional coloring books. And I think this category are more of the easier uh, kind of coloring books. Um, not as many intricate um, designs in them, if you will. So I want to start out with uh, Hannah Lynn, one of my favorite artists. Uh, she prints on Amazon printed paper, which isn't the best paper. It's kind of thin, but what can you do? But her artwork is really gorgeous, and I think everyone would love Hannah Lynn, to be honest, if you're into people. So if you're into coloring people, uh, you would like her. But this is Whimsy Girls Through the Decades by Hannah Lynn. Give you guys a quick flip of the book. So basically it is just taking you through different decades and uh, with girls and it has one version of the page that's a little simpler and one version that's a little more intricate. So you kind of get your pick on what you're, if you're in the mood for one versus the other and if you mess up you can kind of redo it. Um, it's a little different the second time around but you get the idea. So let me show you guys a page I've completed. Not my best work but you know, it, it's there. So there's that one. I just think a lot of people would like Hannah Lynn if you're into, um, if you're into people. Since all of her work is people and portraits, I believe. I'm almost certain it really is all just portraits. So that is Whimsy Girls Through the Decades. I also have here Whimsy Girls at Work, very similar concept to Whimsy Girls Through the Decades, except these are a bunch of girls that are working in different professions. And again, you have um, a more detailed version of the page and there we go, a more simpler version of the page. So if you're into having doubles like that, you might really enjoy this book. There is a girl I completed. Not my favorite. I keep flipping to the Hannah Lynn pages that are not my favorite. That's okay. I really need to dig into this book more. I just, I haven't in a while, but I really enjoy it. Again, really similar to Whimsy Girls Through the Decades. I think, again, if you like people, you'd really like this book. So that is Hannah Lynn. Next up, I have April Amber, and I am going to show you guys two of her Chibi Girl books, a more simpler Chibi Girl book, and then a, a little bit more detailed Chibi Girl book. It, it doesn't get that much more detailed, but um, through feedback, I believe on her Amazon reviews, people were saying after the first book that the just backgrounds were just way too simple. So she ended up doing a more detailed background version in the third book, which is why I'm showing you guys both because they are different in that way. But this is the April Amber book. It is just a bunch of little chibis, which is super cute. And in this book you do get double images, uh, not, not like the Hannah Lynn book where one's more simple and one's more detailed, like these are just straight duplicates. Let me see if I can find one that I've done, see if I flip to one. Let's see. 
Okay, so this is one that I've done. I really love how this page came out. This is just kind of something you could do with the page if you use your alcohol markers, which I will get into a little bit later on what alcohol markers are and what water-based markers are. That is the first volume. And then here we have volume three. Again, the backgrounds in this book are definitely a lot more detailed. Again, it's it's not crazy. Like these are, I think these are made for kids, but I'm an adult and I don't care. So I think anyone could benefit from coloring in it, but I think you guys can tell that the backgrounds in this book are just slight, slightly more detailed than in the other book. So if you want something a little more detailed, but you like the style, I think you should go with the third book. And if you like something a little bit more simple, you might like the first or the second book. I think I showed you guys that page already. I think we're in the duplicates. Let me see if I can find one that I've colored in. Oh yes, I love how this one came out too. She's lovely, the whole thing came out lovely. This is just something you could do in this book. Another one I completed. And that is all I have for April Amber. So last but not least, I wanted an artist that does work on the easier side of things to color, but this is a little more detailed, but I find it to be easier than the artists I'm going to show you guys next. And that is uh, Creative Haven's uh, Home Sweet Home by Teresa Goodrich. I love Teresa Goodrich. She just, her art is beautiful. As you guys can tell, this is a little more detailed, but I find this stuff to be really easy to color. And this is the kind of book where I feel like if I'm a little bit messy with it, it, it kind of works. Let me show you guys what I mean. So this is the page I completed. And I feel like the trees are a little bit messy. I went outside the lines because uh, the line work is so thin and sharp that things inevitably bled. But I feel like overall it still works. So I think if you're into interior design you would like this kind of book and Teresa Goodrich also has other a lot of other books in her collection I just um I'm not showing them I have two others I believe uh, but this one is probably my favorite out of the three so yeah if you're into interiors I really think you would like this book and you can be messy with it and it kind of works and that is it for all of my easy easy. I, I say easy because everything you got to put it into perspective for what's easy for you versus what's easy for somebody else but in my opinion these are the easy uh, normal coloring books and now let's get into the harder uh, coloring books. Next up we have my harder coloring books and basically by that I just mean that they're a little bit more detailed, a little more intricate, a little more intricate and I believe all of the books I have picked and all the artists have double-sided books which means you either have to use colored pencil or water-based markers so like Crayola Super Tips, Stadler markers or some sort of glitter gel pen or just gel pens in general in these books because if you use alcohol marker they will bleed through and then you'll ruin part of your image on the other side of the page which is why I consider these books to be a little bit more difficult to color. That being said, these are some of my all-time favorite books. So the first artist I always recommend to people is Aerie. I absolutely love Aerie's work. If you guys didn't know, uh, just a shameless plug, that Emily Color Me Impressed and I have a color along going on for the rest of the year, hashtag Aerie Expedition 2021. Definitely check it out um, on Instagram. I've actually deactivated my coloring Instagram, but I have my personal Instagram always linked down below. We're still doing the color along. I would love if you guys came along. Let's continue back in the video. This is Romantic Country, The First Tale. I have all of the books in this series. Unfortunately, the third book in this series is not sold on Amazon um, US anymore. I got it on Amazon Japan and I think it's ridiculous that they don't sell it on Amazon US anymore, but they do still have the first two books and this is the one I recommend over the second book because it's simple but elegant and it's amazing. And I think this book just has the perfect amount of detail and it's not too hard. I feel like the second book just has a lot of detail and it's hard to get through a page. The second book has a lot of detail and the first book doesn't have as much. Let me just show you what I mean. Just. I feel like these pages just have the perfect amount of detail in them to make it not too bad, you know? Some of them are still simpler than others for sure, 
But let me show you guys a page I've completed. I've done this one. And it was really easy to color. It didn't take me that long. And I always use water-based markers in my books. Always, always, always. A lot of double page spreads, but they're usually really simple. And there's always a lot of background space. So if you wanted to try out using some other mediums in the background, you definitely could. I believe acrylic paint would work in this book. Um, I've yet to try it. I actually have some acrylic paints now, but I believe they would work. And you could do pastel in the background, things like that. So like I said, this book is really pretty awesome, but I would suggest checking out flips of all three. If you're willing to spend the money on Amazon Japan, pick up the third. Uh, she also has a fairy tales book. She has a world heritage book. She has a tracing series. Any of them, you know, I would just do your own research in terms of which of Aries books you would like the best. I just recommend the first book because it's simple and amazing overall, but Again, you really can't go wrong with any of them. Next up, we have the lovely Johanna Basford, and my recommendation of hers would probably be Ivy and the Yankee Butterfly. This book is, is pretty thick, okay? This book is not, not for the weak, but it's a storybook, and that's why I recommend it, because literally it tells, it, it has a whole story in it. I've read it, it's, it's beautiful, and the pages are just really fun. However, I will admit there are a ton of flowers in this book. You might not like it if you don't like flowers. <laughs> the page came like way out of my hands. But I just, I recommend this book so many times because I love the story and I feel like one day if I ever complete this book, it's, it's like you can keep it as a keepsake or you can pass it on to a, a child, a niece, a nephew, just to cherish it, you know what I mean? So, lovely book. I love it because it's a storybook. Again, some pages are detailed, some pages are simple, a lot of flowers. You kind of have to do your research on what Johanna book you would like. I recommend this because it's a story and it's fun, so that is that. Next up, we have Nightfall by Maria Trolle, and this is my pick for Maria Trolle's books. Her books are stunning. Can I just say she is just one of the most stunning artists out there? I love her books. And this one is no exception. Honestly, this one's my favorite because it has the most blacked background version, but I also think this book is really simple. So some of the pages are simple, some are intricate, but I think this book just has the right amount of simplicity and detail. It just, it works. So her pages overall are really quite simple to color. And actually, is this in this book? I think it is. She gives a plant registry at the back of the book. So if you wanted to search up whatever flower you're coloring, you totally could. Let me show you guys a back, a black background. So like one I've colored versus one I haven't. I just use Crayola Super Tips on this page and I, I just love how the black background makes it pop. And so this book is my favorite because it has the most of the black background, I believe, since it is nightfall. I just think it has the most of the black background pages and they're just so simple but so beautiful. Again, you can't go wrong with any of her books, but specifically I feel like this one's really nice. So yeah, that is my Maria Trolle recommendation. If you guys saw my recent flip through video, I did recently flip through this book. This is Fragile World by Kirby Rosens. This is his newest book and it is beautiful. It is just absolutely stunning. It is simple but also detailed. I feel like I'm saying that for all these books, which is why I chose them. I wanted to pick books that were simple but also detailed. Wow. I feel like I'm gonna regret saying that because it just doesn't make sense, but that's okay. Let me just show you guys this book because it has a bunch of endangered animal species. I'm sorry friends, my camera stopped recording. Apparently, if you hit the 30 minute mark, it just stops recording. That is something I never knew because I never have filmed over 30 minutes on this camera. Okay, but I think it just kind of stopped when I was flipping through the pages. But like I said, this is um, a coloring book that basically brings awareness to endangered species. And just, I think it's really gorgeous. And I know Kirby's work can be really intimidating, but I really believe that this book just isn't as intimidating. Um, 
I think you can really just get away with using markers in this book and you can make the artwork look amazing or you can use colored pencils but for beginners I feel like you're gonna maybe end up using markers and I just I just think this is absolutely gorgeous um yeah this is honestly the book I'd recommend the most from Kirby mostly just because I just don't think Kirby's doodle work is that easy I think it's a little more intricate um, I don't own any books where he has a lot of doodles but from what I've seen I feel like this is just the easier route to go for beginners and once you kind of have this down and you know you like it you might want to delve into his older stuff but I think I would recommend starting with this book Next up we have one of my favorite artists and if you're into horror you will love him. This is Alan Roberts Beauty of Horror 4 and let me just say how excited I am because his Beauty of Horror 5 is coming out in August and you bet your booty I'm gonna pick it up. But this is the Beauty of Horror 4 by Alan Roberts and this is just so much fun. So basically this is just a bunch of horror movies um, and he kind of depicted them as uh, scenes I guess he drew him drew them himself and depicted them into different scenes and they're not just horror movies in this book there's also like a Finding Nemo reference in this book I think majority of these are horror though uh this one where Chucky killed Woody fantastic I was so excited to color this page and I really love how it turned out So if you're into horror I feel like you would like any of his books. I know the third book, I, I own the third book and the third book is more like a carnival themed. I don't really remember what the second and the first book themed themes are. I don't own them, they are on my wish list. Um, hopefully one day I'll pick them up. But this one is like the movie themed, the third one's carnival themed, and the fifth one is going to be uh, music themed which is right up my alley. So again if you're into horror you really, I think, would love Alan Robert. He is just fantastic. Last but not least in this category, we have Hannah Carl's on, and I actually have two of her books to show you because they come from two different collections. Is that what you call, call them? Collections? Series, maybe, is the better word. So the first book we have here is Spirit Animals, and if you're into coloring animals and people, you would really like this book. I don't know why this one is just, like, my favorite out of all of the, all of her books. I just just look at this artwork it's stunning this is one of those books where I I don't even think it's really simple I just think this is kind of detailed depending on the page you pick I colored this double page spread as a buddy color with Emily shout out to you girl so I feel like if you are you know you're a beginner and you're like fuck it let's just do something super extreme go for this book YOLO I really think Hannah's work in general is just really detailed so I'm not sure there's like a great beginner friendly book I think you just kind of have to dive into whatever you choose and just kind of be like eh, hell yeah I'm doing it so it's my recommendation on that but lovely artwork in this book again if you're into people and animals you would like this Last from Hannah I have Tales from the Midnight Masquerade and this one is a smaller version of her books. It's her new series. She actually has a new one coming out and I think it's already out in other countries that aren't the United States. Um, it's like this book but it's a forest book. I'm really excited about it. I'll probably pick it up but for now this is what I have and this book is really cute. Um, this one is I would say maybe a little more simpler than um, her other series. I don't know. I just think this book is super fun. I think the smaller pages make it less intimidating since it is, you know, a shorter book and a smaller book. I mean, some of the pages are still really detailed, but I really just believe overall you can't go wrong with any of Hannah's books if you're a beginner. Again, if you're if you're into just being like whatever let's just go for it you would just really enjoy her books and if you're into jewelry animals people you would really like her books too and that is all of the recommendations i have for these harder books i think we're gonna move into grayscale next if you guys have stuck around for this long in the video already definitely let me know in the comments thank you for sticking around i know this video is incredibly long and actually wasn't expecting it to be this long 
uh, but but it's gonna it's a long one and we're not really done yet so next we have grayscale I the only grayscale books I own are Jade Summer but I recommend her over and over again because her grayscale is just so easy to color and there's so much fun plus in the coloring community a ton of buddy colors come from these uh your grayscale books specifically chibi girls uh this is super duper fun it is just a bunch of chibi girls doing different things and the nice thing about grayscale is that you don't have to color everything in let me kind of explain to you what i mean by that okay i can even just show you with this so you see this like glass on the window you don't have to color it in if you don't want to, you could leave it gray. You know what I mean? Grayscale is really easy to color, especially um, Jade Summer Grayscale. I just use Ohuhu alcohol markers and just go to town, or Cali Arts, and just go to town. It's just such a fun book, I keep flipping to the pages I've completed. I also don't think I colored in any of this um, sidewalk or street or whatever, so. Yeah, that is my first grayscale recommendation. Next is Kawaii uh, grayscale coloring book. Love this one too. I do a lot of a lot of buddy colors with my friend Danielle in this uh, book. This was a recent finish. Really like how it came out. And I, I just feel like her grayscale overall is just easy to color. I really do. Just a side note with these books that these books in particular aren't actually being sold anymore, but I will leave linked down below her newer um her newer grayscale books which are are the same except she added extra pages. So, I will definitely leave those linked instead of these because they don't sell these anymore. If you're into something a little more horror-y and you want grayscale, I recommend Light and Dark Fantasy by Jade Summer. I've only colored one picture in here, but I really want to color more in here. This is just a more creepy version of the other books. Can't go wrong with it. You have a dragon. How fun. I, I've never colored a dragon. This is the one page I've done in here. I don't know if I love how it came out, but that's okay. Just a little something different than the kawaii and the chibi girls if you're not into that, but you still want to color Jade Summer Grayscale. And that is all the recommendations I have for my grayscale coloring books. The next section of this video will be kind of like a taste of section, so let me show you guys what I mean. So the next section of this video is kind of like a taste of section. So basically what I mean by this is these are like sample books. Um, this book in particular is Sun Life Drawings, uh, 40 coloring pages, and basically what Sun Life Drawing did was take one page out of each of their books, stick it into one book, and sell it, um, as a sampler book. So if you're looking for a coloring book that kind of has a little bit of everything because you don't know what you want, this is the book for you. Let me give you guys a quick flip. So these are Summer, Summer, <laughs> uh, Sun Life Drawings, just normal coloring book uh coloring book pages they're very detailed man okay and then these are sun life drawings uh one color uh coloring so we have a mandala we have the lines which if you guys don't know what these are basically it's just like a bunch of lines and once you color it in you can see a finished picture i have one complete with dots Wow, it is so much easier to see what it is on camera, but it is a wolf. Wolf howling with a moon. So much easier to tell on camera. These personally are not my favorite, but I do know a lot of people that love these style of books. We have more lines. Um, this is kind of similar, except it's more squiggly, squiggly lines and circles. And then you have a taste of their color by number books as well, which I have actually done a decent amount in here, just because I think this is fun. And I don't own that many Sun Life drawing books, so. 
you can really just get a good taste of what you like from Jade uh, from Jade's I don't know why I keep saying Jade Summer Jade Summer is my next book I'm gonna show you guys but you can get a good taste of what you uh, want from your sunlight drawing book if you get this book if that's what you're looking for so that is the sunlight drawing book next up we have the greatest hits 100 best coloring pages by Jade Summer this is the Jade Summer book Jade Summer has a crap ton of books out. Um, if you guys don't know, Jade Summer is not actually a person. Jade Summer is a whole brand. Um, that's just their name. And this is a hundred books of theirs and just one page from each. I believe it's the, the cover page on each. And you get a ton in here. I mean, you literally just get everything in here. So if you don't know what kind of Jade Summer book you want, this might be the book for you to kind of test out everything. And it tells you on the left what book it's from, which is awesome. I don't know if all of these books are still available, like all of them in this Jade Summer book. Some of them might not be, but it's still fun. And one downside I do have to this is that um, there are no grayscale pictures in this book. It's all just um, line work. So... Yeah, I mean, there's, I mean, literally a hundred different pages in this book. I colored this page. This was a while ago. This is when I first started getting back into coloring, like, a year ago. So many in here. That is the Jade Summer Greatest Hits, 100 Best Coloring Pages. The last book I'm going to talk about in this Taste Of section is a little bit different than what I've been talking about. But if you want a big taste on uh, mandalas, this is the book for you. This is Sally Berry's 300 mandalas. This book is thick. Like, with like 10 C's, this book is thick. I love it though. I, I'm not super into mandalas. You guys know this. But these are simple enough, easy enough to color. I don't mind. I really don't mind it. And I think that if you are just looking for one mandala book to add to your collection or just to see, like, kind of slowly dip your feet into mandalas, this is perfect. I, I'm not even going to flip from the back because my hand's not big enough for that. But these are just some of the mandalas you get in the book. They're so simple. I mean, they're just so beautiful but so simple. And that's exactly what I've been looking for in a mandala book. Although now that I've tried these, I kind of want to try Camellia Angelkova's mandala books. They're on my wish list. I just, I haven't picked them up. I've been too scared, but maybe I will. So yeah, I mean, there's just so many in here. I really think this is great if you're just a beginner in mandalas and you just kind of want to see what they're like. This book is really inexpensive for how many pictures you're getting, and it's beautiful. And I will show you guys the couple completed pages in my next video for the completed pages of uh, April video. But yeah, that is it for my taste of section. The last section of this video is going to be supplies, so let's get right into that. So last but not least, I have my supplies section. This is going to be a little bit hectic, but my all-time favorite supply to use is markers. Just, or I guess my favorite medium, because I like using different kinds of markers. But my all-time favorite medium is markers. So these are the Crayola Super Tips, and they're just in this kind of packaging. I guess I guess I could have shown you guys my actual box of Crayola Super Tips. That's okay. Basically, these are just water-based markers. Uh, let me show you guys one. So this is just what they look like. The tip on them. These are amazing in double-sided books because they do not bleed through the page. So like I showed you guys in like the harder section um, of the normal coloring books, um, they're double-sided and for alcohol markers, which I will show you guys in a minute, uh, they would inevitably bleed through the page and you would ruin the back image of the book. So I use Crayola Super Tips a lot of the time to color in them because it gets the job done quickly and it's just a beautiful result. I will admit though that they do leave streaks. I personally don't mind them, but I do know a lot of my coloring friends and just people in the coloring community in general just don't love that, which is totally fine. Um, but I don't mind it, and I think it can still give a really beautiful result. Um, and I feel like there are ways to minimize streaking in water-based markers if you do it the right way. Let me know in the comments if you guys want to see a video on that. Um, 
But yeah, these are Crayola Super Tips. They're really inexpensive, and this was a pack of 100. I think I just got them at Walmart, but I know you can buy them off Amazon too. And that's kind of what I've been doing lately since I haven't really been going to the store. So that is my water-based marker of choice. The final stretch here, guys. We just have two more items to go through. These are alcohol markers. So alcohol markers are just a marker that is really saturated with alcohol ink, I think. I, I totally just could have been explaining that wrong. But these are the Ohuhu um, 160 pack, I believe, of alcohol markers. And on this pack, it has a fine tip. And it has a little chisel tip for bigger spaces. I've had these for almost a year now, and they have lasted me super long. I've just had to get rid of a couple colors. Um, these are perfect for color by number books that are single sided. You can use them in Hannah Lynn books, April Amber, Teresa Goodrich, uh, Jade Summer Grayscale, just regular Jade Summer. These are so versatile, just these are absolutely wonderful markers. I recommend these to every new beginner because the pack itself is, is a nice variety and they're very inexpensive for alcohol markers. But if you're not into the fine tip, let me show you guys an alternative for a brush tip. These are my alternative for a brush tip marker if that is more of what you're into. These are the Cali Art 120 set of markers. Again, just a, such a stunning variety of markers. You will find everything you need in here, and the price is fantastic. Um, I'll leave them linked down below if you want to check them out. But let me show you guys um, the tips on these. So this is the brush tip. So as you can tell, it's a lot different than the fine tip. But uh, what is the same on here is that it has a chisel tip, just like the Ohuhu's. I believe these are actually a little more inexpensive than the Ohuhu's um, in terms of if you compared the brush markers for Ohuhu and the brush markers for Cali Arts, I think these come out to be a little bit cheaper. I like these markers a lot, honestly. Just an FYI with alcohol markers is that you should store them laying on their side um, just because the ink needs to flow evenly between the entire barrel and if they're standing up like this, it just doesn't, it doesn't do that as well and you kind of run out quicker. Just a little side note, but these markers are amazing. I especially like these markers for grayscale work um, because in grayscale, spaces tend to be really big and I'm just not the biggest fan of taking a fine tip. I, I, and honestly, I'm not the biggest fan of chisel tips either. I don't use them that often. Um, they tend to leave weirder streaks and I don't like them. But brush markers work really well for bigger spaces and I feel like for grayscale they work really really well. And I think that's all I have to say about these markers and overall with this video, I <sighs> this was a long video. This was probably nearing 45 minutes to an hour. Wow, thank you guys so much for sticking along. If you did uh, stick along, let's see. I want to actually have some like a comment word this time. Comment dog down below. I'm staring at the little dog stuffed animals sitting on my desk. Comment dog in the comments if you guys stayed this long till the end of this video. I know this was really really long but I really appreciate you guys sticking around. If you enjoyed this video make sure to give it a thumbs up. Oh my god I can't even do the thumbs up with this thing in the way. If you guys have any friends or family that are looking to get into adult coloring and um, you enjoyed this video, please send it their way. I would love to inform as many people as possible about my re about my favorite recommendations uh, for coloring books and coloring supplies. And I love, um, you know, reaching new audiences. I would just love uh, to spread, you know, this video out to people if they, you know, find it beneficial. Uh, make sure to subscribe down below if you're new. Uh, welcome if you're new. And I think that's it. I will catch you guys in my next video. Bye, guys.